Welcome back. In today's video, I will be unboxing and reviewing the Demogoblin Wave Vulture. As you can see, Vulture comes with the Demogoblin head and an alternate head for Blacky Drago. The Adrian Toomes Vulture first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man issue number two, and Blacky Drago appeared in Amazing Spider-Man number 48 before Adrian Toomes returned and took back the mantle of the Vet Vulture. Uh, there have been other iterations of vultures throughout the years for Spider-Man to battle. Adrian Toomes' vulture teamed up with other villains to create the Sinister Sticks in one, its first iteration in Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number 1 and has been a, a member on other iterations of the Sinister Six throughout the years as well. As you can see, as with all Marvel Legends, the box art has Adrian on both sides. Uh, same art, just flipped, as usual. Uh, on the back, we have a nice missing picture of Adrian Toomes. Uh, with a little, Adrian Toomes uses a specialized flying suit to soar through the skies as the vulture. And then, of course, all the other figures in the wave as well as the Demogoblin BAF figure shown. This is the first Hasbro version of Adrian Toomes Vulture. Um, he, there was a Toy Biz version that was released with a box set years ago uh, before Hasbro took over. And then since then, Hasbro has released the MCU version based on Michael Keaton's character in Homecoming, as well as the Ultimate Universe Vulture, which came in a two pack with the Ultimate Universe Spider Man. Here we have the Demogoblin head which is, captures his comic likeness in great detail. All those teeth, the demon face, his hood. As you can see, the wings come in four different pieces and each piece has a tab on it. And that piece fits into these little slots on his arm, let's see if we can get to focus, there we go. So he also has a hole in his back, or I assume a backpack, but who you knows. As you can see, they fit really well. They actually go into the, the tabs actually go into the slots much better than the 3.75 inch version of the Vulture. to as detail as you can see here. As you can see, they painted on the pinstriping on his costume. Uh, in the comics, it always looked more like he was wearing corduroy or something. Um, they did a nice fade on the wings from dark to light as far as the coloring to give it some, some level of depth without just being big green chunks. And then of course his vulture scarf thing. The head sculpt is also really well done. I mean, they captured all the comic menace of Adrian Toomes. In his hands, granted there's only one, lot, uh, one set of hands. He doesn't come with alternate hands. Apparently this one does not want to stick as I'm moving him around. He has the one set of hands in the, the grasping pose. Like they're going to claw at Spidey any minute. As you can see, they sculpted his body very thinly to give him that frail old guy look that he has in the comics. My one complaint is that this part of the wing constantly falls out every time I'm moving him, so I don't know if that's just 
this figure or if it's a design flaw. Here he is with the blacky Drago head sculpt. Not as menacing, but still really well done. The texture on the helmet part is really nice. And you can see he's got, just looks like the character. Not as menacing as the Adrian Toomes head sculpt, but still just as good. I will probably be displaying it with the Adrian Toomes head sculpt just because that's who I think of when I think of the Vulture. But it, the Black Lady Drago in head sculpt inclusion is definitely a nice add for the character. All right, now let's check out his articulation with and without his wings. He's got the butterfly chest and this, this could be a reuse of a Spider-Man chest, but I'm not 100% sure. Of course his head and this, this feathers can be removed, so that's good if you want to use the body for a custom or change it it's a little or a lot stiffer than other some of the other ones bicep elbows that's Nosferatu. Doesn't got much as far as the chest goes. The mid torso I can't go back at all. Front minimal. Then weird waist twist. Hips, thigh, stiff again. Really stiff on this side. Um, not much as far as that mobility. Better. Considering that, you know, if you get a, a flight stand for him, you probably want him to have a little bit more mobility more articulation in the hips, but these aren't terrible. I go back quite a ways. Now let's see what his arm articulation is with his wings attached. His wings have a little, the back wings have a little groove there. So it looks like they're supposed to fit under that. Okay. Didn't work out well. Okay. So they are. While it does fit a lot better than the 3.75 version, they are still a little bit loose. Decent so long as you know it's going to pop off. It, you know, probably have to get it where you want it before putting it in. Or that, or it's just like that one that's loose there. Let's see if this one. It's because I keep catching it on the back. Yeah. 
have the limited articulation you'd expect, considering. Again, this would look much better once I get a figure flight stand for him. While the classic comic version of the Vulture will always be my favorite, pales in comparison to the sheer wingspan of the MCU Michael Keaton version with the BAF wings. The BAF wings were a great modern update to the character and the character's taloned feet gave extra menace that the original did not come with and i really appreciated those the michael keaton mcu vulture the wings are you know being the baf that they were substantially larger i mean even standing behind the classic version there were the wing tips come out just a smidge further than the classic wings. You can get them into some really menacing poses. If I had a figure flight stand, that would probably work out a lot better with this figure. Thank you for watching, and please remember to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel, and please share with your friends.